Well, thank you so much for a very engaging discussion. At this point, I would like to invite our panelists to raise any questions or comments with each other. And uh, if we find that they're um, satisfied with what, what each other said and don't have any questions of each other, then we can open it up to the audience as well. So I would invite anybody who would like to uh, jump in with a question or comment based on what you've heard. Yeah, Laura. Well, I think all of us in many ways were underscoring the need for our students to study in other places, in other cultures, and the real importance of actually engaging people where they are rather than just in a theoretical way in the classroom. So I'm really excited about the fact that we've been developing those opportunities here because that really helps our students not only to be global Christians in the fact that they've actually been global, um, but also to sort through the struggles of what it, does it mean to understand yourself in a global context as well as understanding others. So I think that's a unique contribution that we're beginning to make more and more um, here at Westmont and um, portends to grow even further. I think we can open this up to questions that you may have of our panel. Anybody would ask anything of our panel based on what we've heard today? Yes. Well, mainly a word of appreciation for just the historians, since I happen to be a historian as well. <laughs> I think that uh, central to the subject that we're dealing with this weekend is empathy, to be able to understand somebody else study of history really increases the empathy, help us understand where they are from mm -hmm. and uh, where they're likely to go and how we should relate to them. Yes. Good. I would like to ask a question of the panel and then we'll get to your question. Based on your experience with Westmont students as they come in as first year students, what is the area with regard to the social sciences that you find most lacking and therefore most in need of inculcating in them during their four years here, as contrasted, for example, with what areas do you find they already have developed sensitivities toward? Anybody care to elaborate on that? Well, I think one challenge related to the global imperative, frankly, is just geography. And um, I mean, and what that says about the paucity of uh, what's going on in mm -hmm. secondary education and so forth elsewhere, but uh, locating nations, economies, continents, um, um, having some sense of uh, why they might specialize in producing some items based on their climate and, and uh, other kinds of factors is, is very important. Um, on the other hand, um, I'm very encouraged with the curiosity of our students and the okay. willingness to push the bounds. They bring a lot of that to the table and that's very uh, heartening <coughs> to me. I think one of the things that our students often lack um, is really an understanding of other cultures from the perspective of other cultures, and that's really more a reflection of what's available to them in secondary education. Uh, it's very rare that students have available a sociology or an anthropology course uh, to them. And so I think one of the things that uh, we find with students in the introductory classes is really um, introducing them to the fact that there are other ways of life that are quite different and people in those ways of life seem to be doing quite well. Mm -hmm. uh, and also to uh, sort of throw, sort through the discomfort of that um, and yet at the same time um, learn to witness Christ in those contexts as well as see Christ in those contexts and to um, be more humble um, be willing to um, self-reflect in a way that we really figure out at least as best we can what it means to live in the world and not be of it. And that's hard to do when all you have is your own cultural perspective to see the rest of the world. And I see students really growing in that. Um, it's really great to see students who have come and their, their experience may have been a short-term mission or their experience may have been a a safari or a, or a travel um, experience where their interaction has been very superficial to really uh, begin to dig deep more deeply. Thank you. Um, gentlemen, yes, your question.
I'm not going to pretend to provide a uh, thorough answer to that uh, very good uh, question, uh, Dr. Paredes. Um, but let me just say one thing which I think is encouraging. Uh, by way of preface, I think it, 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 it's, it's exactly the right question. I think one of the dangers with emphasizing the global is that we forget the local. And I think that Westmont has a role to play in its Jerusalem here in Santa Barbara. Uh, just by way of encouragement, uh, I've been deeply heartened uh, just this year to see numbers of Westmont students getting involved with uh, a tutoring ministry and a Bible club ministry to uh, the Latino population uh, at Franklin and Cleveland schools on the Lower East Side of our city. Uh, and that's the sort of thing uh, we've been doing for a while. I know that Dr. Doctor has been uh, working with her Spanish students, getting them into schools. Uh, this certainly isn't the first thing, but I think the more that we're able to help students see that these issues, including the cross-cultural ones uh, and the socioeconomic ones, are real, present, and around the corner, and helping them to realize what it means to work with those in Santa Barbara, I think the more of a vision they'll have for caring uh, outside of the country. Because as, as uh, Dr. Montgomery said, sometimes uh, in the classroom it can feel academic. And so I've been deeply encouraged to see uh, Westmont students getting involved uh, in the community here in Santa Barbara. I would also echo that perspective and I think encourage us to realize also that global education is provided by increasing the number of international students who can sit here on campus in Santa Barbara with our students from, from the United States. Some of the most um, incredibly successful classes that I have taught at Westmont have been classes in which we have had a number of international students who can bring then their perspectives and, um, and sympathies um, to the classroom so that then the classroom here at Westmont becomes global, not just when we're overseas with students, which I would also argue needs to be um, fundamentally um, emphasized in, in our global education. And I think, I think the second part of that is by then increasing the number of international students in our classroom, we can have better conversations then also about social science research, because one of the challenges I think this in some ways speaks to your question, Warren, as well, is that students will often think that social science is a matter of opinion. And so here today we have this theme emerging about the importance of educating girls, which right now all of the evidence would suggest that this is an undeniable lesson of development. So one of the challenges I find in the classroom is getting students to appreciate the empirical aspects of social science, even as I try to cultivate a normative approach to a biblical perspective on being peacemakers, reconcilers, and uh, individuals committed to justice. So by increasing diversity here on campus, we also address some of those uh, concerns as well, I believe. Okay, uh, it's time to draw this second session to a close. So would you join me in thanking our panelists once again? At this point, I would like to invite you to a five-minute leg stretch. Uh, there's, yes, there's coffee and refreshments outside, and we'll be back in about five to seven minutes for our third session in the humanities. <laughs>